What's up guys? Welcome back to Horsepower and Pizza. The 435 is finally back in my garage. Today we're gonna do rear brakes on it. I've owned the car for two years at this point. I have never done a brake job on it because it is just my weekend car. And Nolan and I had taken it to a concert a few months ago. Allegedly we're on our way home and I tried to brake from a substantial amount of speed. Yes, we'll, we'll go with that. A substantial amount of speed, and uh, it felt like we were on a rumble strip. So I know the rotors are warped. We're gonna do the rears. There will be a video of the fronts to follow. Let's get into it. Well, that's how that works. This being the passenger side, the brake wear sensor is here, and I'll show you how that goes in here then. This is where the bolt pins go in on the back side that hold the caliper to the hanger. You gotta pull these plastic caps out. There's one on the top and one on the bottom. And that allows you to get an eight millimeter hex into there to pull those pins out. I can't get the camera in there to film, but I take eight millimeter hex on a ratchet and go in and loosen the pins to the caliper. Once I loosen those pins, the threads are down in here. I stuck a screwdriver down there to push them out that way. That gets them out of the way. So once you take those pins out, you can pry up here with a screwdriver and then this comes out. Front pad stays in the hanger. Pull that out, that's now junk. Rear pad has this clip. If I can get this off. Of course, I pulled it off crooked. Oh, it's because it's stuck in here because it has the brake pad wear sensor connected to it, which I will show you. Pry that out of the pad with the screwdriver, but the rear pad has this clip that hooks into the piston of the caliper. Brake pad wear sensor, take this grease nipple off, that comes out of there. It's probably best if you get something for this to sit on, but we're just gonna let it dangle for right now. This is my new brake pad wear sensor. I'll show you how that goes in. If you still have fender liners, there is a plastic nut that is 10 millimeter hex. Take that off. You can pull this down. There's a little plastic box here. Open that box. You can now get in here and you can unclip this. So you can spin this around. Get the screwdriver in there, that unclips. And then there are various clips like this along the line. You open those up, pull that out. There's another one back behind the spring. Pull that one out. And here's your old brake pad wear sensor. To replace that, you take the new one, clip it in, put that back in here like it was and then the box clips shut and then you just have to reroute it down and around through those clips again there's two bolts that hold the hanger on from the back side they are 16 millimeter the top one needs a swivel to get in there no one's gonna take over here because i'm very small and they are very tight these are the 16s that hold on the hanger. No one had to fight them to get them out of there, but he got it done. Looking in towards the hub on the rotor, there's a six millimeter hex head bolt. Just loosen that. That aligns the rotor to the hub. Just take a hammer, loosen that up from the hub, pull that off, clean this up with a wire brush a little bit. So now that that's off, cleaned everything up a little bit, you just go ahead, toss that nice clean rotor on there. Gotta rotate that. Now that that's lined up, you can take that six millimeter hex bolt, start to thread that back in there. That'll align that to the hub and the bolt pattern. Before you put the hanger back on, I clean up in here with a wire brush. That's where the tabs on the pads rod. Do that top and bottom. Okay, so before I put the pads in there, I'm gonna put some grease on here. If the grease doesn't come with your brake pads, buy some. Now that I put the grease in the hanger, I'm gonna put the hanger 
back around the rotor. And those 16s need to thread in through the back into the hanger, which is easier to do if you can see. It's very important that you make sure there's no grease on your rotors because that's going to be counterproductive to try and stop. So now you're going to take your caliper. They make tools for this. I use a C-clamp. Twist it so it pushes the piston in. Run that sensor in through the back of the caliper. Put that so it lines up there to be pressed in. Clip the sensor into that clip, press that in here, and then the front pads go like that. Slide this, oh, I might not have pushed that piston in far enough, unfortunately, you can do it by hand. Slide that in, like so. And then those eight millimeter pins on the back side will bolt right back into the hanger bracket. Once you tighten those pins back in and have the caliper tightened back up to the hanger, you can take the plastic caps, put them back on on the back side, and then this spring goes on right like so. Everything is now complete with that. If you want to reset your brake service, in the computer system, make sure you have the key in the car. Do not put your foot on the brake and hit the ignition button one time. That's going to bring up your service lights. When everything comes up, press and hold this reset button. Rear brake pads, reset possible, release, press and hold again. It'll say reset, press and hold again. Reset in progress. Reset successful. And there you go. The last thing I want to do before I put the wheel on and torque the lugs to spec, this grease cap, pulling that off one more time, route the wear sensor underneath that, snap that back on over top just to hold that out of the way. So now that that's done, all you need to do with the wheel, back up on there, get one of them started. You always tighten your lugs in a star pattern to evenly distribute the force holding them on. I'm just hand tightening these to get them started. And then you're going to want to use a torque wrench to torque them to 98 foot pounds of torque. A lot of people like to just use the impact to run them on, but if you ever need to change a tire on the side of the road and you ran them on with an impact, you might not have a great time getting them off. So it's nice to go to torque specs. I hope I made this video easy enough to follow. Best of luck. If you guys have any questions, please drop them in the comments below and I will do my best to get back to you as soon as I can. At Horsepower Pizza on Instagram, at Cold Pizza Podcast on iTunes, Spotify, Instagram, and wherever else you get your podcasts. If you want to support, head over to www.horsepowerandpizza.com. Peace out, build it for you. Mm -hmm.